As we age, our joints tend to wear down or wear out. Arthroscopy and arthroplasty can help. So what's the difference between those two? Welcome to the Live Greater podcast series, information for a healthier you from the University of Maryland Medical System. Thanks for listening. I'm Joey Waller. Our guest, Dr. William P. Cook, Chief of Orthopedic Surgery at University of Maryland, Upper Chesapeake Health. Dr. Cook, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome. How are you, Joe? Good. Great to have you with us, Doc. So first, what are some examples of conditions or injuries that would entail getting an arthroscopy or arthroplasty procedure in the first place? Well, the difference between the two is that one is a minimally invasive procedure, whereas the other requires opening the joint. Arthro means joint, and arthroscopy means scope of the joint, whereas arthroplasty means opening the joint and uh, replacing the surface of the joint where the cartilage is worn out. So, for instance, with arthroscopy, more minor procedures could be done with a minimally invasive approach as an outpatient. Procedures such as repairing damaged cartilage, or removing a torn meniscus, which is a cartilage cushion in the knee. Also, ligaments can be repaired, such as a cruciate ligament after a sports injury. Sometimes we also use arthroscopy for removing inflamed tissue if it overgrows and becomes painful or causes bleeding. It can also be used for malalignment problems with the kneecap to balance the ligaments in the knee. And also, certain fractures of cartilage or bone can be treated arthroscopy with arthroscopy, such as a cartilage fracture that may become detached or fractures that can be visualized more easily with the scope for fixation, such as a avulsion fracture of the tibial plateau. In contrast, arthroplasty usually is for the replacement of damaged or worn out cartilage on the surface of the joint. So for instance, if someone has bad arthritis, we would open the joint and place a metal or plastic surface to take the place of the cartilage that's worn out. This might be applicable in conditions such as degenerative joint disease, or rheumatoid arthritis, or arthritis that's the result of previous injury we call post-traumatic arthritis. There are other conditions as well, less known, but often needing of replacement, such as a condition called avascular necrosis, where the blood supply to the surface of the bone and cartilage is lost and it causes deterioration. Those are the major differences. Gotcha. Now with arthroscopy, those of us that follow sports know that often we'll hear that an athlete was subject to one so that doctors could, quote unquote, take a look to see what's doing. What's meant by that, actually? Well, we can get a good first estimate of what's going on with physical exam and with imaging studies. But sometimes we just have to look in the joint and assess different structures to see if something's torn or out of place or if there was something that wasn't recognized on an imaging study, such as an x-ray or an MRI. So what about in a situation where it might be unclear at first, or it might be kind of a toss-up, so to speak, as to whether the one procedure is needed as opposed to the other? What are some of the determining factors? How do you make that diagnosis? Generally, for more minor issues, Arthroscopy is the preferred treatment, and that's because the incisions are smaller, it's an outpatient procedure, and often the recovery is much quicker. So if we were to see an x-ray that didn't show much cartilage loss, then arthroscopy would still be an appropriate procedure. However, if on the x-ray or an MRI or a CT scan imaging study, we saw that there was no cartilage left in the joint, and we saw what was called bone on bone, then it would be more appropriate to consider opening the joint and replacing the surface of the joint with arthroplasty. Is there ever a situation where neither of these procedures is what the doctor ordered, so to speak? Yes. In injuries such as sprains or minor tears, 
very often we don't need to operate at all. And physical therapy and some time off from the sports or rigorous activities that caused the problem would be appropriate. Arthroscopy or arthroplasty would be used to correct a situation that's not going to heal otherwise without intervention. Understood. So now let me turn that last question upside down. Does a patient ever need both of these procedures, and what might that scenario be? In a lifetime of a joint, it may require both procedures, but almost always the arthroscopy precedes the arthroplasty. And that would be for a joint that still has some usable cartilage left and some life left in the knee. Now, there are some indications for arthroscopy after arthroplasty, and that would be if someone had overgrown too much scar tissue after undergoing a knee replacement or other joint procedure. And very often, arthroscopy is a useful tool for removing loose bodies or removing scar tissue that may be interfering with joint motion or be causing bleeding or causing pain. Now, you mentioned earlier there's a difference in the recovery timetable between these two. So typically, what is it for each? Uh, With modern-day arthroscopic procedures, anywhere from three to six weeks, most people are doing quite well. If there's a component of arthritis or there is tissue that needs longer to heal, sometimes therapy can last up to three months but more typical will be three to six weeks. For arthroplasty, the usual healing time is between two and three months. How about in the time you've been at this yourself, doctor? How much easier, how much more advanced have these procedures become? Well, when I first went into practice, I was at a uh, training program known for its uh, advancement in anterior cruciate ligament reconstruction. They were starting to use arthroscopy for that, but still patients would stay a couple of nights in the hospital. Now, with complete arthroscopic reconstruction of cruciate ligament tears, we have patients going home within an hour or two of their surgery. So the the procedures have changed dramatically based on our instrumentation, uh, our anesthesia methods, and our accelerated therapy protocols. In a similar fashion, arthroplasty has changed dramatically. We now have patients that are routinely going home within hours of a joint reconstruction. And when I first went into training, it was not unusual for three to five day hospital stay and then a transition to a transitional care unit rehab program for another couple of weeks. So they both have dramatically changed over uh, my 30 year career. Great to hear, and I'm sure those in our audience considering this, either procedure that is, are relieved to hear that. But as you well know, more than anyone, anytime someone hears the word surgery, albeit minor, it can be a little disconcerting. So in summary here, what would you say to those listening that have been thinking about this, that have been told they might need it or do need it? What would you say to put them more at ease? Both these procedures are wonderful for decreasing pain and improving function. For more minor procedures, arthroscopy done through two small incisions just below the kneecap require a single stitch and an ace wrap and you're walking on it uh, often the same day. The risks are very minor. Complications are very uncommon. For arthroplasty, if you're hobbled by arthritis, I can tell you that my most common comment is, I wish I hadn't waited so long, Doc. The risks are about 1% for infection or blood clot or stiffness, and that's often in patients who have other health problems that put them at higher risk. Our implants are lasting greater than 20 years now. In fact, the 20-year survival is better than 90%, and they continue to improve. So both are very beneficial procedures with low complication rates, which help to improve function and decrease pain. And one last thing real quick, because you mentioned it right there, Doc. You alluded to the good old ACE bandage. This is the second interview recently in which 
The ACE bandage has come up in conversation. It's still a valuable tool after all these years, isn't it? It certainly is. It helps to prevent swelling and put some compression on the surgical side, which helps relieve pain as well. Great to know that if you have one of those laying around, don't throw it out, right? You never know. (laughs) That's correct. All right. Well, folks, we trust you're now more familiar with arthroscopy and arthroplasty as well, the differences. And so, Dr. William P. Cook, thanks so much again. My pleasure. Call anytime. Sure. And you can find more shows just like this one at umms.org forward slash podcast. Again, that's umms.org forward slash podcast. If you found this podcast helpful, please do share it on your social media. And thanks again for listening to Live Greater, a health and wellness podcast brought to you by the University of Maryland Medical System. We look forward to you joining us again. Hoping your health is good health. I'm Joey Wall.